All right, good morning and welcome back to another COVID episode of Distance Learning from Skirb's Basement. Today we'll move on with uh, the major muscles of the human body and we're going to go work on Roman numeral three, muscles that move the tongue. Now, does anybody remember which end of a muscle is responsible for motion? That's right, the insertion is. Now, if these muscles are going to be moving the tongue, guess what's moving? The tongue. If the insertion point is the end that moves, guess where all of these insertion points from these muscles are going to be attached? You got it, on the tongue. So we got four major muscles here. Now don't forget, the tongue itself is a muscle, and it has two abilities. You can, you can roll the corners of your tongue. Let me put my hands in here like this. You can roll the corners of your tongue up. Sorry about that light shift. And you can also wiggle the end of your tongue which is really important in speech and chewing your food as you roll that, that mass of uh, chewed food around in your mouth and into your teeth. So it can do that on its own, but all of the other motions are the result of skeletal muscles imparting force on the tongue and manipulating it. So let's take a look at the first one. It is called the genioglossus, and all of these muscles are named for origin and insertion. If you go back and watch that video, the origin is always first in the name, the insertion is always second, because there can only be one. So if you look at this, genioglossus, there's two words here. Glossus, that right there, that is the Latin word from Greek for tongue. So that's the insertion point. And genio is a reference to the inside of the mandible. So let's bring up that first picture. And I got it right today, pictures first. Now you're going to see this picture keep popping up, the same one over and over and over, and we're going to shift the muscles. Now, just so, to make sure you have a reference point, those are the front teeth right there. So this guy's looking that way. So you're looking at a split view of the left side of his face. Now this Shamu looking guy right here, black and gray, that's the tongue. And all this other stuff is muscles. Now in each one of these examples, the red one is the muscle we're talking about. So there's the genioglossus right there. Okay, let me get my pen out now. Now you can see, here's the inside of the mandible, that's the origin, that's the end that's going to stay still. And then this is the insertion point running out onto the undersurface of the tongue. Now this is important for understanding. Notice, here's the origin, there's the insertion. That origin is two things. Look at its location. Where is the origin relative to the insertion? It is below it and slightly in front. So by manipulating the different fibers, you get two different actions out of this. So let's take a look at the origin first. The origin is the inside of the mandible. That's the genio reference. And then the insertion is the undersurface of the tongue. And you're not going to be able to feel this because there's actually connective tissue covering these muscles, but it's directly under your tongue. Now what can it do? Now action is always based on origin insertion. You guys know this. Insertions can only go which direction? directly to the origin. Since the origin is down, which way can the tongue go? Down. Since the origin is slightly in front, which way can the tongue go? Forward. Not far, but forward. So think about what that does. First action. It depresses the tongue. Now this is an action word, depresses, that means what? Means what? Can't hear anybody. I uh, still can't hear you. Depression means down, any body part moving down in standard position. So it pulls the tongue down in your mouth. When's that important? Uh, when you open your mouth to put food in, can you imagine if your tongue was always in the way? I mean, you'd look like a two-year-old sitting at your high chair spitting peas all over the place because you couldn't get them in your mouth. That would be weird. Now, since it's also in front, it can also protract or protract is any body part moving forward, moving forward. So this muscle pulls the tongue forward, and you can stick your tongue out of your mouth. Pretty cool. So that's the genioglossus. Let's go number two. The styloglossus. Now, glossus still means tongue. What do you think stylo refers to? Hmm. For all you bones people out there that actually studied bones and learned them when you were supposed to. Uh, stylo makes reference to the styloid process. So let's bring up the picture. Now, notice... The one genioglossus used to be red, but now this one is. Hey, look right there. There's a little pointy piece of bone sticking down right there. That's the styloid process. That's that sharp projection coming off the temporal bone. So that's going to be the origin. 
and then the tongue itself is the insertion. So let's look at that. Origin is the styloid process, the end that doesn't move, okay? And the insertion is the sides of the tongue. Now, every time you do this with any muscle, take a look at the origin. Where is the origin relative to the insertion point? Hmm, I don't know. Let's take a look. Action. It can elevate the tongue. Now, how is that possible? Well, the origin is actually above, so when this contracts, it pulls the tongue up in your mouth. That's going to be pretty important here in a second. Okay. It can also retract the tongue because the origin is behind the tongue. So you can stick your tongue out, and then you can pull it back in your mouth. So this one goes up and backwards. Let's talk about the third one, palatoglossus. Now, that's an interesting word there. Uh, you guys already know that palato is referring to the palate or the roof of your mouth, but there are two parts to it. There's the hard palate, which is in the front. Do anybody remember that? That's the palatine process of the maxilla combined with the horizontal plate of the palatine. That's the bony anterior portion. If you go beyond that, though, there's a very, very thin piece of soft tissue that separates the back of your nasal cavity, mostly, from your pharynx or your throat. And this prevents food and liquid from inadvertently going up into your nose, which you guys know is still possible with the right amount of negative pressure. That's how milk comes out of your nose or you get corn jammed in there. And don't tell me it hasn't happened because it has. Let's take a look at the picture. All right now, if you look right here, here's the muscle, palatoglossus, right here. So glossus, the insertion of the tongue, Palato. Now it looks like it's hanging in midair, but there's a piece of soft tissue that continues off of the hard palate to the back right here. So it's actually attached to soft tissue. What does that mean for this origin? If the origin is on soft tissue and not bone, what's the origin going to do? Yeah. Yeah. You guessed it. It's going to move. So now this end's going to move and that end's going to move. When that happens, kind of like the, uh, the uh, frontalis muscle, what's going to happen is, is the origin and the insertion are both going to move towards each other like this. Pretty neat. Watch. The origin is the anterior portion of the soft palate, so just in the front end of the soft palate, and it inserts on the sides of the tongue. So what can this do based on origin insertion? Check it out. It'll elevate the tongue, so the tongue is going up, and watch this. The soft palate is coming down because it's soft tissue. It's not bone. It's not locked into position. So you have the soft palate coming down, tongue coming up. When would you need that? When would you need your tongue to come up under pressure and the soft palate to get pulled down or squeezed into it? Hmm. Somebody would have figured this out in class, but since we're doing a boring old PowerPoint, uh, let me give it to you. Boop. Swallowing. This is what happens when you swallow. Pretty cool. And you can kind of feel that, like the trachea and the tongue, everything, everything's going to come up. Soft palate's going to come down. It's pretty cool. Let's go to number four. And the last one for today is hyoglossus. Now, what do you think? A glossus is tongue. We know that already. What do you think hyo is? Hyo, hyo. The hyoid bone. Very good. So let's bring up the picture. And remember, it's the red one. Here's the hyoid bone. Now, look, the origin is down. Look at that. It's below the insertion. So the origin is the hyoid bone, and the insertion is the side of the tongue. Pretty cool. Why is that getting washed out like that? I can't really see it. Oh, well. We'll have to make do there. Let me see if I can tone that down a little bit. There you go. That's a little better. Well, you can still hear it, and I'll give you a copy of the file. So the origin is the hyoid bone, and the insertion is the side of the tongue. Okay. Now what's it going to do? Now, obviously, one thing it can do, look, the origin is below. It's going to depress the tongue or pull the tongue down in your mouth, tongue going down in your mouth, and it can draw the sides down, which I, I don't know exactly what that does for you, but it definitely creates a little bit more room in your mouth when you're chewing or swallowing and manipulating your food and get that nice rolling action of your tongue like this. Pretty cool. So that is... The major muscles that move the tongue. Uh, on Friday, we will move into muscles that move the head. So until then, be safe, take care, and hopefully at some point in the next 10 years, we'll see each other again. See you guys.